That's right, you're watching Sky News. It's uh, that part of the evening when we reflect on some of the breaking stories that have taken place throughout the day and have a look at what you're saying about them. North Korea, Iraq, Madonna, keep your opinions coming on news at sky.com and text us 84501. Now, tonight, you've packed the beach towel, the sun cream, you've bought your euros, and just as you're about to board the plane to the sun, someone says, you do know you're murdering Mother Earth, don't you? Well, that's my slightly abridged version of a study out today about the aviation industry, which suggests the government has to ground the industry's expansion if it's serious about tackling climate change. Now, the result of that, if it happened, would be the end of the era of cheap and convenient air travel for us all. Sky's environment correspondent, Robert Nisbet, has this report. Falling ticket prices and rising incomes have set passenger numbers soaring, but this new study published by Oxford University suggests the government has to ground the industry's rapid expansion if it's serious about tackling climate change and reducing the emission of greenhouse gases. If you have aviation continuing to grow whilst other sectors are trying to reduce, then aviation becomes a bigger and bigger share of all of our carbon dioxide emissions. The report urges the government to make it more expensive to fly by taxing aviation fuel and increasing passenger duty, which could boost revenue and the British tourist industry. But the Prime Minister has said that could both harm the economy and annoy passengers. However, the authors suggest people are coming round to the idea. They point to a poll by Maury in which 60% say they would support airlines picking up the bill for the environmental damage they cause, even if that meant an increase in fares. Just 18% disagreed. But at Heathrow's Terminal 1 today, there was little enthusiasm for not flying at all. I think of other ways, you know, to try to help the environment, but, but flying is a, is a much easier way of transportation for me, so I, I think I would still fly. Everyone should kind of try, but people who enjoy travelling and they want to see different culture and stuff, so I don't really see what's wrong with it, because there's other ways you can get cut down and um, hurt in the environment, like everyone could recycle or like not take their cars to work and stuff. Obviously if there are other means that um, we can use less fuel or whatever in the, in the planes for an extra cost, I'd be prepared to support that, but I don't, actually don't see that you could fly less. The airlines like EasyJet say they are already doing their bit, investing in clean technology and entering an EU scheme where those who pump out less pollution are financially rewarded. Hysterical persecutions don't help us. What we need is a debate. You can get the debate going between the state, between government, between the industry and between research institutes and NGOs. We don't need to destroy our economy to save the planet. That's not the choice we have. We can balance these questions, these factors, and that's what we would like to do. With ministers and officials already under attack for the amount they fly, six and a half million miles last year, today the report kicks hard at what many environmentalists consider to be the government's green Achilles heel, its reluctance to curtail the growth of such a high-flying industry. Robert Nisbet, Sky News.